Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for bringing us to the beginning of this new day. Thank you for everyone tuned to this. Families, individuals, we pray that your word will come alive to bless us and to draw from our hearts such response that pleases you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I hope that you are not alone. If you have someone, your loved one, your family, who can listen to this with you, it would be great to have them come close by now. We are reading from the prophecy of Daniel, chapter 4, verse 24. Starting at verse 24 and continuing to verse 33. Daniel, chapter 4, 24 to 33. I read... This is the interpretation, O King. It is a decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord the King, that you shall be driven from among men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. You shall be made to eat grass like an ox, and you shall be wet with the dew of heaven, and seven periods of time shall pass over you till you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will. And as it was commanded to leave the stump of the roots of the tree, your kingdom shall be confirmed for you from the time that you know that heaven rules. Therefore, O King, let my counsel be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by practicing righteousness and your iniquities by showing mercy to the oppressed, and there, that there may perhaps be a lightning of your prosperity. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 20 months, he was walking on the roof of his royal palace of Babylon, and the king answered and said, Is not this great Babylon, which I have built by my mighty power as a royal residence, for the glory of my majesty. While the words were still in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken, the kingdom has departed from you, and you shall be driven from among men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and you shall be made to eat grass like an ox, and seven periods of time shall pass over you until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will. Immediately the word was fulfilled against Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from among men and ate grass like an ox, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair grew as long as eagle's feathers, and his nails were like the bird's claws. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we are looking at a very, very important subject in this reading, and that has to do with the place of God in the affairs of men. It is important that we pay close attention to this because God does not share his glory with anybody, and in particular people who are in positions of authority Indeed, spiritual authority, this comes as a very serious warning that we cannot afford to ignore. As we see from the passage, it says that this is an interpretation. The dream had come earlier, in the earlier chapter, so you must have listened to that uh, yesterday and the day before. The dream had come that the uh, King Nebuchadnezzar had. Now there is an interpretation and eventually a fulfillment. That is what today's readings cover. The interpretation and the fulfillment 
of that dream. Now the king had summoned all the wise men of Babylon to come around and to tell him the meaning of the dream. Thankfully, he remembered it this time. And they couldn't until he called Belteshazzar, Daniel, who came and he gave the interpretation. He told him the dream and this is the interpretation that Daniel uh, gave. O king, it is a decree of the Most High which has come upon my Lord the King. The way Daniel addresses God as the Most High is particularly important in addressing this king who thought he was all in all. And in looking at the fact that God rules over the kingdoms of men, it's true that there's only one kingdom we're talking about in this passage. But when you begin to apply it, it holds true that not only the kingdom of Babylon, but every other kingdom in history and every other kingdom anywhere come under the authority of God. God rules over the kingdoms of men. Many times we feel that God has asked man to have dominion and that includes dominion over God. And man has a tendency of feeling that God has just handed everything over to him, the control of the world, forgetting that we are just a tiny bit of God's vast universe. And this tendency makes us feel that we can do without God. God, you stay in your corner, we we'll call you when we need you. And that's how many people live. But in this case, this is a pagan king who had his God that he worshipped. And in this context, he needed to encounter the God who holds his breath, the God who is greater than his kingdom, the God to whom he and all other kings must submit. That is what he wouldn't acknowledge easily, but that is what this passage brings across. And it is very instructive, therefore, that all who feel that they have been given power by God must recognize that the God who gives power can also take that power. And the best use of our power that God gives us is to use it as God directs, to use this power to honor him. It's a mandate from God. It's not an absolute authority that we have. Anyone who comes into kingship or into any position of power must know that he is only there at God's pleasure. And he must listen and pay close attention to the agenda of God. But back to our passage. Let's read what we have in our daily fountain notes. It says, in our reading, we see that while the king boasts about his mighty power, the interpretation of his dream given by Daniel is fulfilled. The king becomes insane, begins to behave like an animal, and is banished from the society. From verses 25 and 32, we see that the purpose of this judgment was to enable him to realize that God rules over the kingdoms of men and gives them to anyone he wishes. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And Proverbs 16, verse 18, and James chapter 4, verse 6, uh, come out to this verse. The king's boasting in verse 30 was probably due to his enormous contributions, which made Babylon the mightiest city in the ancient world. With the famed hanging gardens, that were recognized as one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. May we learn never to boast of our achievements, however great they may be. I will return to the concluding um, paragraph of the notes. But what we see as we look closely at this passage reminds us of the folly of thinking we can live 
without regard to God. Indeed, Psalm 14 verse 1 says, The fool says in his heart, there is no God. And whenever we, even those who go to church, make plans and do things without God, we are behaving like a fool. Whenever we take any step without reference to God, either by asking, what does the word of God say? Or, let me pray about this and receive guidance from the Lord. We are behaving like fools as if God doesn't exist or as if he does not matter. And what we see here, therefore, the dream was interpreted and we see the contrast. Daniel did it in such a humble way. Here is a proud king, but here is Daniel interpreting it in a humble way. He could have come with pride. He could have said, well, after all, all the other wise men couldn't uh, tell the king his dream. Now, I am the one who can tell the, uh, the, the, the main meaning of the king's dream. I'm great. But no, he didn't do that. And what was at stake here? We see that he needed to know that God rules over the kingdom and indeed, like we said in, in this uh, study, over the kingdoms, all the kingdoms of men, because in Revelation we read that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ, and it shall reign forever and ever. Now, um, Daniel told him, that dream relates to you. It refers to you. And he said it in a very humble way. He said, oh, I wish it uh, applied to somebody else. And then he said that, your dwelling shall be driven, you, you'll be driven from men, and you'll become like an animal. That's what our note here today says, insanity. And if you see in verses 24 and 25 and 32, what is at stake easily comes out. In verse 25, we're told, till you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and gives it to whom he will. So that was something he needed to know, not just by head knowledge, but to acknowledge it and to let it sink and control whatever else he was doing. If he felt he, was, he had absolute power, remember there is God. And in uh, verse 32, the same thing is said, um, that until you know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will. We return to verse 27. There, Daniel told him that there is a way out. Even though this dream is terrible and the interpretation is terrible, there's a way out. He says, therefore, King, let my counsel be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by practicing righteousness and your iniquities by showing mercy to the oppressed that there may perhaps be a lengthening of your prosperity. That's the beautiful thing about the Bible. The Bible is solution-oriented. When it tells you what is wrong and the consequences, the Bible shows the way out. So by the time we do what is wrong, we already had the options, and we chose what brings damnation. Even the popular verse, John 3, 16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Which means if we don't believe, we will perish. And as we see this today, there are a lot of people around us who are going through very difficult situations. Uh, and the man here was, in verse 30 was saying, I have built by my mighty power as my royal residence for the glory of my name and my majesty. You see, that is how pride speaks. Pride is always I, me, and myself. And that's what he was doing. I, I, I. Reminds us of the rich fool, isn't it? The rich fool who said, I will do this, I will do that, I will do this, then I will say to myself, I, I, I. Or if you read the passages about Lucifer, he says, I will make I will raise my throne above the, uh, the Most High. I will do this. I will do that. Now, how do you speak? 
Do you allow God's glory to come into your story? Do you allow God to take the glory? So I really want us to consider this as we pray. Verse 27, Daniel advised the king to renounce his sins in order to avoid the terrible disgrace that he suffered. The experiences of Ahab, the king of Nineveh, show that God is always ready to welcome the repentant sinner. May we repent of every known sin today and give ourselves wholly to God. And the prayer is, O oh God, I acknowledge your lordship over all the affairs of men. Heavenly Father, I pray for all who have listened to this today that you help them to bow to your lordship in their lives and in every decision. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.